There once was a young and handsome baron who lived in unmatched luxury. His lands were fertile, his family rich, and his household blessed with an abundance of good fortune. He dwelled in a sweeping estate and loved to host grand masquerades and galas to entertain his highborn friends. One year there was a great drought. The fields dried up to dust and the baron's peasants began to starve. The baron could have easily sold some of his finery to buy food for his desperate people or open his storehouses to give them a portion of what he had kept, but he selfishly waved off their plight. The peasants are fat from years of plenty he said, and my friends have come to expect my hospitality. So the commoners continued to suffer. One night, when the moons hung bright overhead like dewdrops in a spider's web, and the peasant children cried in their beds with aching empty stomachs, the baron hosted a yet another great masquerade, more grand than any before, to mark the coming of his twentieth birthday. Lords and ladies from all around were in attendance, but none was commented on as much as the mysterious Lord Longfellow. Wearing a porcelain mask, a stylish hat, and a broad coat made of fine silk, he was the very picture of a dashing rogue. Who is this? the Baron wondered. I do not remember inviting a Lord Longfellow. So when his cheeks were hot from too much wine, he approached the mysterious gentleman and demanded to know his full identity. The answer came as a dry and dusty whisper like dead leaves scraping on an old coffin lid. I am Longfellow, the hungry lord of shadows. I am the patient master of the web. The drunken baron's guts turned to water at the sound of the voice behind the mast, but he could not show his fear. He demanded to see Longfellow's invitation. I am invited by the weeping of the mothers and by the cries of their children, was the raspy reply. You have neglected your duty to those who depend most upon you. You insult me in my home, the Baron cried. I make no apology for it, the visitor said calmly. You are a venal and useless man who has squandered his gifts and let others suffer for his vanity. Noblemen are the worst of all, for they hold themselves above all others. Furious, the young baron challenged Lord Longfellow to a duel. The other guests clapped and walked to the gardens to watch the duel. But as they walked, Longfellow pulled the baron aside and lifted his mask to reveal himself. His eight eyes glittered in the torchlight as his six twitching limbs played along the grips of fine pistols. I am Lord Longfellow, and I've come to collect my toll. No living man has defeated me. If I gun you down, then my business is done, and all the rest can go. Deny me this, however and all the noble blood here will be spilled, but you I will leave for the rest of your days. What say you, Baron? The Baron gulped, and then looked at the plump and powdered faces of his gathered friends. Truth be told, he thought their company was not that pleasurable, their conversations tedious and dull. To give his own life for theirs seemed not fair at all to him, and after a brief pause he gave his answer. Longfellow threw off his broad coat and tossed his mask aside. His gleaming pistols filled the air with fire and death, and in moments all the lords and ladies lay in pools of spreading crimson. Then Lord Longfellow was gone. When the sun rose and the peasants saw what the Baron had done in the night, they hauled him off as a murderer. The trial was swift and his punishment harsh. When the sun rose next, he was standing on the gallows, ready to swing from a rope like a spider from a silken thread. But before the trapdoor fell, the Baron saw in the crowd a lord wearing a silken robe and a mask of porcelain. The roguish figure tipped his hat, and the young Baron fell away.